The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. It's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Now let's join The Great Gildersleeve. Uh, continued cold westerly winds, possible snow. <laughs> Wish winter was over. Russ British Row in UNO meat. Row, row, row. Why can't those fellows learn to get along? By George, if I was there. Bevan hollering at Vashinsky, Vashinsky hollering at Bevan. Call themselves diplomats. Hello, is Piggy there? Hi, Mrs. Banks. Wonder what good it does for two fellows to holler at each other in different languages. Hi, Pig. Hey, come on over and let's build a snow fort. <laughs> Listen, we can build a super fort. I've got it started already with a great big snowball. <laughs> Thank you, Leroy. Then there's nothing for me to do. Gosh, it might as well not be Saturday. Isn't there somebody you can play with besides Piggy? No. What about Ralph? He's got the flu. What about Everett? His mother's making him work. Not a bad idea. <laughs> what about uh, Sylvester? He wanted to build a fort at his house. Then why not go over and help him? Build a whole fort for him? Wouldn't hardly get any use out of it myself. <laughs> Leroy, that's no way to approach this thing. Sit down here for a minute. Where? Uh, anywhere. <laughs> I want to talk to you. Now, did you read the morning paper? Sure. Good. Then no doubt you read about the difficulties the United Nations seem to be having over in London? Well, I, I sort of skimmed over the front page. Yes. <laughs> to the funnies, I suppose. Oh, no, I read the sports, too. Sports and comics. We're living in an atomic age, my boy. The problems of the atomic age will not be solved by Dick Tracy. I'd like to know who have a better chance. <laughs> Seems to me you're old enough to be taking an active interest in the world, my boy. You ought to know what's going on. Going on where? In the world. There's trouble going on over in Greece. And the British think one way about it, and the Russians think another way. There's a devil to pay over the whole business. So what? So they'll never get along if they don't stop hollering. Like you and your little friends. How? Because you won't listen to reason. You want to settle everything your own way. Shouting at Piggy just now. That's disgraceful. I've spoken to that before. You have? Repeatedly. You talk to your friends so rudely, it's a wonder you have any. You ought to hear the way they talk to me. You... <laughs> well, that's no excuse. And I think if you try to practice a little graciousness, you might find yourself more popular. I am popular. I was voted the 10th most popular kid in 7B. <laughs> Well, we needn't go into that. But if you'll try to remember, my... Excuse me, Mr. Gilsey, you got a minute? Of course, Bertie. Try to remember, Leroy. Okay. Well, what is it, Bertie? I'm trying to lay out my schedule for tomorrow, Mr. Gilsey. You want Sunday dinner at noon or in the evening? Doesn't really matter, Bertie. Have it either time, and I'll guarantee to do it justice. <laughs> then I'll have it in the evening. All right. Say, uh, Bertie, I was just thinking. It's been quite a while since we had one of your remarkable lemon pies. You know what I think of your remarkable lemon pies, Bertie. I ought to, Mr. Gilsley. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, mere words can't express the way I feel about your lemon pie, Bertie. Do uh, you think possibly... Uh, I'll make one for tomorrow night if you like. Is that soon enough? I shall possess my soul in patience, Bertie. Your pie will make a beautiful end to a beautiful day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beautiful pie, beautiful pie. Lemon meringue or lemon chiffon. Oh, well, I guess they're both the same. Yeah, doorbell. I heard it. I want Leroy to play with you. Leroy, he's around here somewhere. Come in, Craig. I think maybe Leroy's upstairs. Yes, he did go upstairs. Hello, Craig. I want Leroy to play with me. Well, he should. If the house isn't falling down, here he comes. You ask him. Hi, Craig. Hi, Leroy. You want to play? 
No, I'm busy. Leroy, do you remember what I told you? What? Oh, yeah. Well, I suppose he's better than nothing. <laughs> How'd you like to build a snow fort, Craig? Okay. Atta boy. Come on, I've got to start it already. If we really work, we can get it all done and put a roof on it. Okay. Hey, Uncle, where's my sweater? I had it just a minute ago. Sweater? On the sofa, Leroy, right where you threw it. Oh, yeah. Then when we get it finished, we can have all kinds of fun. I'll be the colonel and you can be the sergeant, okay? Is a sergeant higher than a colonel? Well, they're about the same. <laughs> Only the colonel gives the orders. Where did I leave my gloves, Unc? They're probably under the sofa. Well, what do you know? After we build a fort, can we have a snowball fight? Sure, Craig, anything you want. We'll take turns defending it. I bag first. Okay, I bag second. Well, I'll go, Unc. Piggy, I thought you were going skiing. Oh, I decided not to. I decided I'd rather build a snow fort. And besides, the snow is no good for skiing. It's perfect for building a fort. Hiya, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hiya, Piggy. Hi, Craig. Hi. Come on, let's build a fort. Yeah, let's go. Oh, uh, say, Craig, you better go home. We won't need you. Well, I'll be... Why not? You're too little. Come on, Piggy, let's get going. Leroy, come here to me. <laughs> Craig, you and Piggy go outside and start building the snow fort. Both of you, understand? Okay. But isn't Leroy... I want to have a word with Leroy. You go outside and start the fort, Piggy, or else go home. Is that clear? With Craig. Okay. Gosh, what did I do? Come on, Craig. Okay. Now, Leroy, you listen to me. A few minutes ago, you had no one to play with. Craig came over. You decided he was better than nobody. Okay, okay, I'll let him play. Let me finish. Your rudeness, your ingratitude, trying to shoo Craig away as soon as Piggy walks in the door. That's disgusting. Why, five minutes ago, you thought Piggy was terrible. What's the matter with you? I don't know. I know. The trouble with you is you're selfish. You think only of your fun, the dickens with everybody else. Now, if you try to think how to give Craig a pleasant morning, you might wind up having a nicer time yourself. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I guess so. Yes. Then see if you can go out and have a pleasant time. Just three boys playing happily together. Now, will you try? Yeah, I'll try. Where's my hat? Behind the chair over there. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Unc. Come out and see the fort after a while. I will, my boy. <laughs> Tell me I don't know how to handle kids. Yes, sir. And if I was in London... <laughs> should I be feeling hungry? wonder if I eat more than I used to. Well, if I do, it's because I need it, especially in the winter. <laughs> Leroy, I've asked you not to slam that door. It's not Leroy, Auntie, it's me. Marjorie, I'm surprised, my dear. I slammed it because I was running. Leroy and Piggy were throwing snowballs at me. Isn't Craig with them? Oh, yes, they're having some terrific battle or something. Hostilities ceased so they could all take a shot at me. <laughs> Just give those kids a couple of more years and they'll know better. <laughs> oh, I'm not so sure about Leroy. Whether he'll ever grow up, I mean. Don't worry, my dear. In the meantime, boys will be boys. That's their way of having fun. <laughs> For goodness sake, no! What's the matter? Leroy hit me in the eye with his snowball! <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Let me see it, Craig. Let me see it. Call Leroy in here, will you please, Marjorie? Okay. Craig, if you'll take your hand off your eye so I can look. It hurts. You hit me right in the eye. Leroy, come in here right away. Ah! Now, Craig, Marjorie, get me a pan of hot water, will you please? It's cold water. It's probably a contusion. All right, contusion. Cold water, then. Leroy, come here. I didn't do anything. I'm just having a Craig says you hit him in the eye with a snowball. Is that true? I may have, accidentally. Gosh, you have to duck, you know. He put a rock in the snowball. <laughs> That's a dirty lie. Leroy, I'll settle your hash later, young man. <laughs> now, Craig, let's be brave, my boy, shall we? Let's have a look at the eye. Well, now, that doesn't look so bad. Here, blow your little nose. I don't want it. Oh, for corn. <laughs> Water on. Good. Now, Craig, if you just let me soak a little cold water on your eye. I want to go. Yes. Well, this will help it, Craig. I want to go. 
Maybe you're better at that. <laughs> take him across the street, my dear, will you? I don't want anybody to take me. I'm going home. But Craig, watch him, my dear. Make sure he gets there. Okay, come on, Craig. Leave me alone! <laughs> now, Leroy. But, Aunt, we didn't want him in the game in the first place. He's too little. Never mind that. What's this about a rock and a snowball? I never put any rock in any snowball. Craig couldn't have been doing all that yelling just from a nice, soft handful of snow. Who said they were soft? <laughs> I'll admit we were packing them, but gosh. I sent you out there to play happily with Craig and Piggy. I should think you could manage to play for an hour or so without making somebody cry. It was an accident, Uncle. I swear it was an accident. Was the rock an accident? There wasn't any rock. Leroy, the weight of the evidence is against you. Craig is obviously suffering real pain. Oh! I regret, young man, that I'm going to have to punish you. In a way, you're not going to enjoy. But a rock and a snowball is a serious matter. It might endanger... Hey, Anki! How oh, Anki! Craig, get home, all right? Yes, but now Mr. Bullard's tearing over here. He didn't even wait to put on a hat. Oh, well, show him in. You stay right here, Leroy. I want to see your uncle immediately. <laughs> He's right in here, Mr. Bullard. Yeah, right in here, Bullard. Tell the slave if I want to... Oh, there's the young scoundrel. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? <laughs> I was just talking it over with Leroy, Mr. Bullard. Oh, you were? Well, let me tell you, Gildersleeve, this is no time for talk. What this boy needs is a punishment he'll remember. Now, just a minute. Don't interrupt. Putting a rock in a snowball is a criminal offense. And a boy who'll do a thing like that will soon be doing worse if you don't nip it in the bud. Now, are you going to give him a good sound thrashing? No, I'm not. <sighs> <laughs> And why not, may I ask? Bullard, it's none of your business. I can raise my nephew without your advice. Well, when your nephew runs around like a young criminal, endangering the lives of smaller children, somebody ought to do something. And if you're unable to handle it... I can handle him very well. But in the future, you keep that little crybaby of yours at home where he belongs. Don't call my son a crybaby. Your nephew is a big bully. Oh, he is not. He's a fine boy. <laughs> now get out of here, you. Get off the property. Don't worry. And keep your family off the property. All right, and you keep yours off mine. Oh, Marjorie, Leroy, from now on, there'll be no communication whatsoever with the Bullard family. Yes, Uncle. And I mean it! <laughs> now, while the feud simmers and Gildersleeve boils, here's something else that will interest you. Mr. Lang, I happened to be in the store the other day when my grocer got in a supply of parquet margarine. I never saw anything grabbed up so fast. <laughs> By the time my friends got there, all the parquet had been sold. Well, we're sorry that supplies are so short, but you see, even though the Kraft Foods Company is making all the parquet margarine it possibly can with limited supplies, there still isn't enough to meet the big demand. Well, I certainly hope there'll be more parquet soon, because it's my family's favorite spread. <laughs> it's the favorite spread of millions. And that's why Kraft is doing its best to distribute parquet so that everyone gets a fair share. Well, that's just what my dealer said. And uh, did you by any chance notice something different on that package of parquet you bought? Different? Oh, it said they're adding more vitamin A to parquet margarine. That's right. Every pound of parquet margarine now being made contains 15,000 units of important vitamin A, making this delicious spread an even more valuable food in your family's daily diet. So be sure to look for Parquet Margarine. And if you can't always find it, please be patient. The Kraft Foods Company and your dealer appreciate your cooperation during the period of temporary shortage. Now back to the Great Gildersleeve. Sunday noon finds him with his niece and nephew just coming out of church. Fine sermon, Dr. Needham. Fine sermon. Uh, by George, it's a glorious day out. Brisk but sunny. Uh, good morning, Mrs. Carrington. My goodness, you're looking younger every day. Leroy, use your handkerchief. <laughs> yes, indeed, a fine sermon. Hello, Tom. Leela. <laughs> Hi. And mind if I walk home with y'all? The shoe is on the other foot, Leela. Do you mind if we walk home with you? Rock Martin, I declare, I believe you sweet talk every woman you see. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That's not so, Leela. Oh, I heard you there with old Mrs. Carrington telling her she was getting younger. Well, she couldn't get any older. <laughs> I'll never again believe a single nice thing you say to me. Yeah. Uh, you children walk on ahead, will you? Leela. Leroy, no more small balls. I wasn't going to throw it up. I just wanted to... Oh, for goodness sake, there's Mr. Bullet and little Cray. Yeah. Huh? Oh, walking along there, right across the street. Leroy dropped that snowball. <laughs> Where do you suppose Mrs. Bullet is? Out of town again? If she is, I don't blame her married to that guy. Oh, I do hope she isn't sick. I called to him, Throckmorton. You who? Leela, don't. He didn't hear me. You called. Don't him. speak to him, Leela. Why not, for goodness sake? Because I'm mad at him. Well, that's the silliest thing I ever heard. I'm certainly not going to let that stop me. You who, Mr. Bull? It's him or me, Leela. If you talk to him... Oh, he sees us now. Excuse me, Frost Martin. I'll just run over and inquire about his wife. All right, go ahead. That's women for you. Come on, Marjorie. Come on, Leroy. Hey, wait! <laughs> Tell me this is our dessert, Bertie. Well, this is only lunch, Mr. Gillespie. You've got a whole big dinner coming tonight with lemon pie, remember? I know, but poof. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Gillespie, but that's the way you said you wanted it. Lunch in the middle of the day and dinner at night. Very well, Bertie. We'll eat our fruit. Oh, do I have to? Eat them, Leroy. They're delicious. Yes, yes. Uh, by the way, Bertie. Yes, sir? Why the overcoat? Is the house so cold you have to wait on table in your mitten? <laughs> no, sir. I'm just going to run across the street for a minute. Across what street? Where? Over to the Bullard to borrow some lemons from Lily Bee. I got my pie crust already, and I found it didn't have no lemon. Bertie, under no circumstances, at any time whatsoever, are you to go to the Bullard for anything. Whatsoever. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. But Lily B ain't the Bullard. She's associated with them in a business way. Well, if you're going to make lemon pie, you've got to have lemon, at least the way I make it. <laughs> I don't see what harm it is to do if I just sneak around to the back door. Bertie, I would rather crawl on my hands and knees from here to Nome, Alaska for lemons and accept one as a favor from Rumps and Bullard. Go downtown and buy some lemons myself, on foot, right now. I won't even finish my dessert. Ha! <laughs> because it's prune. <laughs> You will finish them, my boy. Ha! Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Gildersleeve. Gentlemen, gentlemen. I'll be right with you. I'm just waiting on the judge here. Go right ahead, Peavy. No hurry. I'm just here on a matter of life and death. That's all. Well, thank you. Now, judge, what can I... Well, do? I'd like three bottles of Kalak water, my friend. Three uh, bottles of Kalak water it is. And I'm returning these three empty. Don't forget the deposit. Hmm. There we are. Three bottles of Kalak water. The deposit, Peavy. Don't forget about the deposit. Uh, the judge is worried about his deposit, Peavy. He's got a big investment there. Fifteen cents. Well, if it's agreeable to you, Judge, we can apply the deposit due you on the old bottles against the deposit I'd have to ask you for on the new one. Well, that arrangement would be perfectly satisfactory to me. Of course, I, I could pay you the money that's coming to you on these bottles. That's three bottles, that's five cents a piece, that's, that's 15 cents. But then I'd have to turn right around and ask you to pay a deposit on these bottles, which would also be 15 cents, you see? Fellows, I'm waiting. I understand. I understand, Peavy. I think the other arrangement would be simpler. Well, I just didn't want you to think I was putting anything over on you. <laughs> I quite understand. Just take it out of that, will you? Five dollars. There you are. Thank you very much, and call again. Now, Peavy, have you got oh, any... Oh, God. Yes? I'm sorry to say one of these bottles you returned doesn't appear to be a Kalak bottle. Why, Judgey, pulling a fast one? Certainly not. Judging by the smell, I'd say it was a turpentine bottle. Well, it may have had turpentine in it, but it was originally a root beer bottle, party size. Horace, aren't you ashamed? 
The deposit on it was five cents, exactly the same as the Kalak water. I know, but I don't handle root beer, Jack. Well, I thought as an old customer, you might at least do me the simple service of returning the bottle for me, thereby saving me the trouble of going all the way to the A1 market, which isn't open today anyway. Yeah, it's open tomorrow. I'm sure if you were to go there tomorrow... This is could... my day for returning bottles. Fellows... I'm waiting here while you argue over a nickel. All right, keep the bottle, sell it, smash it, do anything with it. Now, don't misunderstand, Judge. I'd like I'd to... rather take the loss. Oh, don't be an old sore head, Horace. You're asking Peavy to do something that's not his business. Peavy's a druggist. You want to cash in on your precious bottle? Take it to a junk man. When I want any advice from you, my friend, I shall call on you. Well, don't call before 9 o'clock. <laughs> Peavy, if I can get a word in here edgewise... Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you? Have you got any lemons? Lemons? No, Mr. Gildersleeve, I haven't. No lemons? Well, I've got to have lemons. What am I going to do? I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I don't carry produce of any kind. You don't have to tell me that, but it's Sunday. I thought as a good customer and an old friend, if you had any lemons around... Peavy is a druggist, Gildy. If you want lemons, go to the greengrocer. <laughs> back, Bertie. Mr. Gilsey, where have you been? You've been just about ready. Where have I been? Where do you think I've been? I've been all over town looking for those confounded lemons. Of course, I had to stop and talk to a few people on the way. <laughs> Lucky thing I didn't wait for you to bring them. The pies are already out of the oven and cooling on the shelf. Well, you got some lemons? Yes, sir. I bought them from Mrs. Ransom. A fine thing. I went all the way downtown after those Mom, lemons. Did you get the ink for me? The what? The ink. Ink? No, did you ask me to get ink? Oh, my goodness. Now, how can I finish my letter? Letter? Just a minute. Who are you writing to all of a sudden? I don't see what difference that makes. Mm-hmm. I thought so. It's that Marshall Bullard kid. I didn't say who it was. You don't have to. I can put two and two together. Marjorie, I absolutely forbid you to write to Marshall Bullard or have anything to do with it. You understand? Him or any member of his family. I don't see why. Leroy's been playing with his brother all afternoon. Craig? They're up in Leroy's room right now. Up in... Leroy... Tonight, after dinner. What? With movies. Craig brought over his projector. Admission's only five cents. We're going to... Just one minute. What? Stay right up there a minute, Craig. Leroy, what did I tell you about playing with Craig? Answer the door, will you, Bertie? Yes, sir. Well, young man, what about it? Gosh, Uncle, I forgot. You forgot a likely story. Well, he started it. Is He's Craig here? Over his projector. Well, I know Don Welly's here. Tell him his father wants him to come home this minute. He has no business over here. Oh, Mr. Bullard, can't Craig stay? Let him stay, please. Please, Pop, let me stay. Will you please? We're going to give a show. <laughs> yeah, show. Sure. With movies, Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. And everybody will pay a nickel. A nickel? It'll be swell. Swell. Super. Super. Will you, huh, please? Please, Pop, please. Nothing doing. Come along, Craig. Come, Leroy. We won't fight, will we, Craig? No. Honest, Mr. Bullard, I didn't put a rock in that snowball. Did I, Craig? Tell him. Tell him the truth. Well? You want to have a show, don't you, Craigie? Tell him. Let's get to the bottom of this. You mind if I come in for a minute and kill the sleeve? No, please do. <laughs> now, what are the facts about this snowball, young man? Was there or was there not a rock in it? There wasn't a thing in it, was there, Craig? No prompting, Leroy. Well, Craig? Why do your eyebrows grow so long, Daddy? Answer my question. Was there a rock in it? No, there wasn't. There was no rock in the snowball? Then why did you tell me there was? Well, you shouldn't be too tough on it, Mr. Bullard. Little kids get that way. Yes. It just comes over them. Why, I remember when I was a little kid, I used to tell the worst lies. Why, what? Leroy, you keep out of this. <laughs> uh, hold on now. I think that's pretty nice of Leroy, trying to protect Craig like that. Well, that's what I do all the time, protect him. Don't I, Craigie? Yep. Oh, brother. <laughs> you know, Gildersleeve, <laughs> I have the feeling some apologies are in order here. I guess I've been something of a fool. Nonsense, I've been the fool. I didn't even believe my own nephew. I don't know that I even believe him now. That's how kind of a fool I am. 
<laughs> but if you're willing to let bygones be bygones... Well, absolutely. And I want to apologize for Craig, too. Well, you don't need to apologize for Craig. He's a fine young boy, aren't you, Craig? Yes, sir. Put up your dukes there, young fella. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> He'll be a man one of these days. Fine lad, fine lad. Oh, Miss Kelsey. Yes, Bertie? Excuse me, but it's on the table and it's getting cold. What? Oh, oh, say, Bullard, I understand Mrs. Bullard's out of town. Why don't you and Craig stay and have dinner with us? Well, that's mighty nice of you, but... Plenty uh... for everybody, if you're willing to take potluck. We're having lemon pie for dessert. Well, I... Sure you will. <laughs> Bertie, two more places for dinner. Oh, boy, then we can have a movie show after, hey, Craig? Oh, boy. Go wash your hands for dinner now, Leroy. You too, Craig. Leroy, show Craig up to the bathroom. Last one up the rotten egg! <laughs> yes. Boys will be boys. Call your sister, Leroy. Yes, Bullard, these little squabbles, they're all ridiculous. Just as I was saying the other day, if neighbors like you and I can't get along together, what chance is there for Great Britain and Russia? By Thunder Gildersleeve, you talk sense. <laughs> well, Mr. Bevan, shall we go into dinner? After you, Mr. Vyshinsky. Now, wait a minute. Uh, okay, I'm Vyshinsky. Let's go in ski. <laughs> <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a few moments. And now here's a special message from Kraft to the millions of American families who are regular users of parquet margarine. Many of you women have written to tell us that it's often hard to get parquet. And dealers from coast to coast say that supplies have been moving out of their stores so fast they've had to disappoint many customers. Now, we assure you that Kraft is producing as much parquet margarine as available supplies permit. Right now, every Kraft food dealer is getting a fair share of all the parquet margarine that's being made. He's trying to serve you as best he can. Both the Kraft Foods Company and your dealer appreciate your patience during this period of temporary shortage. Buy parquet when you can, and as soon as conditions permit, Kraft will again be making enough parquet margarine for everyone. Just a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any old clothes you can possibly spare, give them to the Victory Clothing Drive. Just take them to any police station, firehouse, or post office, and they'll be sent to people in Europe and Asia who need them desperately. Good night, everybody. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. And now here's a bright spot in the food picture. There's plenty of tangy golden Kraft salad mustard in your favorite food store. So pep up those sausage meats and those egg and cheese dishes you often serve these days with a taste-tingling tang of Kraft salad mustard. And to please sharper taste, you'll also want a jar of Kraft mustard with horseradish added. Both of these delicious mustards are made to Kraft's own special recipe. They're just what you need for pepping up meals. So be sure to buy both kinds, Kraft salad mustard and Kraft horseradish mustard. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.